an ancient kingdom with legends of violence, cruelty, and torment in its blood. Join your hosts, Ross, John, and James, as they bravely tread where few would dare. Witness their journey into the horrific history of British horror. They are... The General Witch Finders. Ladies and gentlemen, goblins and ghouls, welcome back to the 46th episode of the General Witchfinders podcast. And brace yourselves for this one, seriously. Uh, I'm James in Bournemouth in southern England. Uh, I'm John Pountney in South Wales, which is still in the south of Wales, and I'm very pleased that we've reached the number of um, episodes that I've been alive in yeah. years Whoa. on planet Earth. Which is oh, pretty nice, amazing, isn't it? Nice. Well, congratulations, yeah. Planet Earth. It feels like really we've been good. doing this for 46 years, actually, doesn't years. it? <laughs> well, this weather, this this is what, when I think about doing podcasts, I think about doing it in the summer. I, I, we must have started doing it in the summer. Um, we did, because yeah. it was lockdown and we yeah. had nothing else to I, do. Yeah. I, I remember that time when you were in your shed, Ross, and it got too hot for you in the shed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's when we watched the, the Earth Die Screaming, and that's one of my favourite episodes. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm Ross in Dorchester in southern England, and this time we survived the survival. Supernatural power is now a movie. After all, I've just killed 300 people in a field and walked away without a scratch. That makes me pretty special, doesn't it? The pilot is haunted by the guilt of his survival. It'll come. It has to, Harry. I think I'm going mad. The psychic is tormented by visions of the horrors yet to come. They're asking for your help. Who's asking for help? The men, women, and children who died in your aircraft. 300 murdered souls combine their psychic energy to hunt down their killer and destroy those who profit from their death. Are you sure you can go through with it? He has to. Help us all. Brace yourselves for a journey to the outer limits of nightmare. You've seen the gates of hell, Mr. Keller. You survived. All right. So here we go. The survivor is a 1981 supernatural horror. And I would say both of those terms are very, very doing a lot of heavy <laughs> lifting there. Australian-British co-production, yeah. directed by David Hemmings, and starring yes. Robert Powell, Jenny <laughs> Agatha, and Joseph Cotton. In Adelaide, Australia, not eaten in the UK, is the original novel written by the, oh. Ross has put, infamous... <laughs> James Herbert. But I don't think infamy says that he suggests that he's done something bad, Ross. Oh, well. Yeah, he wrote all those books. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah. The So in the original novel, airline pilot David Keller, played by Powell, survives the crash of his Boeing 747-200, unhurt despite all 300 passengers dying in the accident. 
With no memories of the accident, he starts to suffer strange supernatural visions. Director David Hemmings is most famous for his acting roles, of course, including Gildano in Barbarella, Marcus Daly in Dario Argento's Deep Red, and Thomas, the fashion photographer, in the hugely successful avant-garde mystery film Blow Up, a role turned down by Sean Connery because director Michelangelo Antoni, Anto, 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 Anto Oni, I can't Antonioni. Antonioni, thank you, John, would not show him the full script, but oh. only a seven-page treatment stored in a cigarette packet. Amazing. <laughs> Heppings would later feature, weirdly enough, in The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, with, which was Sean Connery's last movie Pushed 37 years later. Didn't and, it? Yeah. And, oh my God, I, I can't blame him. It is a <laughs> dreadful, dreadful uh, disaster that I felt. So Robert Powell, best known, of course, for his portrayal of charismatic cult leader. Any, uh, <laughs> by the way, right wing Christians listening to this, this is Ross's words, not mine, yeah. of charismatic cult leader slash son of a carpenter in the 1977 epic television drama series Jesus of Nazareth also played secret agent Richard Hannay in the uh, adaptation of The 39 mm. Steps he appeared in the TV in... series following that called Hannay yeah yes he also appeared in Ken Russell's Tommy as Captain Walker and at the request of his friend and golf partner comedian once again should be in inverted commas Jasper Carrot co-starred in the BBC sitcom The Detectives which yeah. apparently ran Mid-90s. for five series oh. it was ridiculously popular oh dearie me he also lent his voice I watched some Lovejoy the other night <laughs> 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 amazing well although I know Lovejoy uh, Ian McShane has now gone on to be you know better known for being like Alf Swearingen in um, oh Christ Wildwood or whatever uh, it's called that's it. That's it. Yeah. Deadwood. Deadwood. Thank Deadwood. you, John. But for me, now, ever since I found out, it's him who goes, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Grace Jones. At the start. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hang on. Let, let, let me get it. Let me, let me get it. We can have a... Uh, uh, and trust me, listener, the fact that we've got she comes on hula hooping for Prince Charles. Yep. <laughs> no. Hang on. Hang on. Mayday. Right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, you ready for this? Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Grace Jones. There you go. Yeah, it is as well. To the rhythm. <laughs> wow. Yes. Written right? for because... um, um, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Well, well, Trevor Horn, the producer, of course, is a total, total pop genius. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he knew... Um, he knew Ian McShane and basically yeah. saw him in the pub and said, will you come and record this for me? And he was, mm. and Ian McShane said, I was drunk. And I said, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. But now, whenever I think, you know, Lovejoy, for me, he's always in- entwined with Grace Jones. Amazing. Like Rod- just like Roger Moore anyway. in A View to a Kill. Oh, when, um, oh, you- <laughs> when May Dave um, <laughs> flipped him over and got on top, that was one of the sexiest things I ever saw when I was oh, in no. Lovejoy. <laughs> Oh my god! Too okay. I, don't, okay I, think that was edit, I think that was edited out the ITV uh, oh, free eight Lordy. o'clock version, wasn't it? Yeah. So, um, right. uh, Jesus oh. Nazareth. Um, yeah, yeah. Did any, Which, anyone, yeah. Did any of you guys have to watch that in RE when you? Was, Wait, what do you school? mean? Had no. Ross, Ross, we were at the same school. We had to watch the whole fucking thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never what? seen it. I was thinking it did make me think about the cult of Mithras, though, and how it all could have been mm. very different, couldn't it? It could indeed, John. Yeah, it could yeah, indeed. Yeah. And you know, from my time when we went to Rome with the mm. sixth form, we learned all about this. That you know, Mithras was uh, as popular as Christianity mm. yeah. at, the, at the time in Rome. Anyway, we were if people. That, if that, you know, if that yeah. took off, we might not mm. have had the detectives um, TV series. <laughs> oh well, there you are. Right. <laughs> okay. So, meanwhile, uh, it also then says. Uh, he also lent his voice to the 2002 rock opera, The Hound of the Baskervilles, by Clive Nolan and Oliver Wakeman, son of Rick Wakeman. <laughs> Is it? I've got no idea. Wow. Okay. Playing John Watson. Powell was also considered for several roles in Life Force, a general we find is classic. <laughs> several roles. Yes. From, ep- from episode 39 of this podcast. And apparently he was a founder member of the Social Democratic Party in 1981. Which kind, of morphed the yeah. Lib, which kind of morphed into the Lib Dems in yeah. this country. Uh, Good God. And Ross That's put insane. that he campaigned alongside Barry Norman. The Barry Norman, yeah. Ross. <laughs> no. I, I as, think... As John would say, no way. <laughs> I think there's a call <laughs> no way. To, 
to point out that for a certain time in um, the past, (laughs) (laughs) um, Robert Powell was one of the biggest film stars in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I and I think and I was wondering why he disappeared, and I think it was probably because he chose subsequent to Jesus of Nazareth, he mm. chose some of the worst films ever made. <laughs> yes, to appear yes. in, and that didn't yes. necessarily further his career, did it? In no, a, in he, he he needed to sack his agent, really. Yes, but, but you can only I, go so far on having blue eyes, can't you? Really? <laughs> well, but the thing is, that's one of those things that I you know you just take it as granted when you were younger and being forced to watch it in RE, but like. It wasn't until I was much older that I realised how like, universally popular Jesus of Nazareth was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right, anyway. Right, so, yes. So he campaigned alongside BB, famous BBC um, film critic Barry Norman, now sadly no longer with us, on behalf of the party's first leader, Roy Jenkins. Wow. Well, that's insane. Yeah, that, wow. that surprised me, Ross. Good research. Well done. Yeah. Jenny Agatha, OBE, who plays the role of Hobbes, the clairvoyant, who Ross yeah. tells us was a male character in the novel, apparently, is oh. best known for her ongoing role in the, in, in Ross has put, inexplicably popular Call the Midwife TV series. I would just say it's the most Daily Mail of TV yeah. shows. Whenever it's I watch it, it's the same male, fucking thing. Like, of course it is. People love it. And only it's like, no love Nostalgia. Joy. Right-wing yeah. nostalgia, my friend. That's, no that's what it joy. is. And it's certainly not Heartbeat or The Royal. No. no. So she also starred in two adaptations of The Railway Children, the critically acclaimed film Walkabout, her other big Australian yeah. thing, which we may talk about later. And, of course, relevant to this podcast, an American werewolf in London. Listen to episode 26 for more information on that one. 20 she, episodes ago. <laughs> oh, my God, really? <laughs> yeah, right. And then it says... She also featured in two Marvel movies. James, as our resident comic book fan, can you name which ones? I am going to say she is in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Bing! Whoa! Right. Oh, and then adjacent to that, I am going to say... Uh, That's the Captain same America. character. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Captain- okay. Oh, yes. Um, Captain America... Oh, no, no. She's just in the original Avengers, isn't Correct. She? Bing! Yes! Wow. Oh, What's the name of her character? I've got absolutely no idea. She's one of the people that was part of like the Shield Council. Yeah, she's and they Council appear. Woman Pamela Hawley. Yeah, yeah, because because um, uh, yeah. Did, did I say Winter Soldier? I yes. Guess, yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. Winter Soldier is probably the best one. Anyway, she probably got paid um, more for those two parts than like any of. Uh, like, oh, and good luck to her. She absolutely, yeah, she yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. deserves it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it she, says additionally, she stays um, clothed oh. in this film as well, <laughs> yeah. doesn't she? She's yeah. a, does. Yeah. Uh, additionally, according to Ross, she appears on the 1990 prefab Sprout song "Wild Horses," <laughs> not the uh, not a cover of the Rolling Stones. Wild Horses, wild horses, wild horses, wild horses, wild horses, horses, wild horses, horses and drag me away. Why? Anyway, I, right. So yeah, <laughs> right. So I've gone off on a tangent here. So I cannot resist going into a Mick Jagger impersonation yeah. at any point. He almost right, was on so, his feet and started prancing around the room. Uh, oh. it, right, it, Charlie's good tonight, isn't he? <laughs> right, so, so apparently she was on Prefab Sprouts, Wild Horses, speaking the words, I want to have you. Hmm? Oh. Okay, right, five thanks, Ross. <laughs> so, uh, it also says um, that... Uh, the film also features Joseph Cotton, the best man at oh. Orson Welles' wedding to Risa Hayward. Oh, bastard. Wow. Yeah, he appealed... He- he has appeared in five films selected by the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress in America for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. And that's Citizen Kane, The Magnificent Ambersons, Shadow of a Doubt, Touch of Evil, and Gaslight. Uh, and once again, if, unless you're uh, unaware, that is from which the term gaslighting comes yeah. from. In addition to these classics, he appeared in many films and TV programs, including pertinent to this podcast, one episode of Tales of the Unexpected. No. He later admitted, <laughs> I was in a lot of junk. I get nervous when I don't work. Uh, and fair enough. Fair enough, man. You know, I understand that. You know, you want to keep the money coming in. So, But he's in a Dr. Fibes film, isn't he, that we've watched on this podcast? Was he? Oh, yes. I forgot about yeah. that. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> That's probably yeah, six, I thought you were going to say episode number whatever. Uh, and it was, whatever. Yeah, he's in that. And I remember saying at the time, poor bastard, like, how did he end up in this? He's been in 
uh, Citizen Kane and Third Man and all that. And now he's ended up in this crap. And yeah. now this was his last film, wasn't it? Yeah. And it, you don't wow. see him until like an hour in. No, he had a stroke shortly mm. afterwards, so he had to stop working after this. With Jenny Agatha. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> that's that's just the subtitle for tonight's episode crude right? yeah, so, and then go, go 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 joseph go go joseph you know what they say hang on joseph you make it someday Shut you and your dream go ahead of your time is this, this is tonight's <laughs> no, 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 episode no. is a musical <laughs> it is because in case if anyone i'm sure you both noticed the lyricist Tim Rice. Yes, I Best said it was Tim Rice. With a- <laughs> it is Tim Rice. A TV Best known pr- for his like- work with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yes, he pops up in this movie as a television newsreader. Totally nonsensically. Yeah. It's the fir- I think it's the first dialogue in the film. Yeah, but it's like, why, why would you have a TV journalist literally right next to an ongoing... Disaster. <laughs> yeah, it's just insane. Now, I was going to say, my theory behind this is, I bet he was a friend, he was a mate of David Hemmings. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. On the piss. And I'm, I'm going to wildly suggest that he was in Australia to watch The Ashes. All right, yeah. Because <laughs> he's a big cricket fan. Or do Both them. It, or it'd be yeah, some well, kind of tax tax dog. dog. Or, or so, it's something along those lines, because I thought, I bet he was in Australia watching some cricket, mm. and Hemmings said to him, oh, do you fancy coming along... I don't know why I went Australian then. My Australian, my bad Australian accent is going to get a lot of work. coming along and doing some filming, mate? Just, yeah. yeah. Oh, come along to the set, and I'm sure I can fit you in somewhere. You know, that, that's, that's a bit more like it. Right. Crude. Okay, so back to, back to our introduction. So prior to filming, David Hemmings and producer Anthony uh, I. Gianni discussed whether to make this film gory or more cerebral. Mm. Similar to the 1961 version of The Innocents. They yes. chose the latter. A decision Gianni later said was a mistake. Yeah. Now, I quoted learning- it from, directly from Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Stop, On learning stop, of the project, stop, stop, the Daylight or back. Magic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On learning of this project, James Herbert, the author of the source novel, sent a note to David Hemmings offering his assistance. He never received a reply. Oh, wow. And in 1988, he dismissed this film and the later Deadly Eyes, the film adaptation of the rats, as. They're terrible. Absolute rubbish. Oh, God. I can only say, don't blame me. And I think absolutely... Well, I'm <laughs> He's got a bit James Michael Caine there, one. James. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can blame only me. say, I don't, you know, don't blame you know, me. My, my impressions are limited. I'll, even our listener knows that now. <laughs> right, so The Survivor was Herbert's third novel, published in 1976, coming after The Rats and the Fog. Now, the music for this film is by Brian May, but no, not, not the, the one you're thinking of, the man who had his ass shredded um, a, f- a few years back, the Queen Axsmith <laughs> and a Badger Protector. Oh. Uh, this is the Australian Brian May. Who well, has hang on, so, so, before you go any further, what, who got his ass, who got their ass shredded? Yeah. Brian May. Wait, uh, who? You know about Wait, this. No? Himself, in a gardening accident. Almost oh, final task. Let, let, uh, let, let me find the link <laughs> let to that the story for you. That is, just not, right, that is Brian, not common knowledge. May. Uh, I had my arse shredded the <laughs> right. other day when I, I had a um, impulse coronation chicken sandwich. Oh. Right, God, look, look at the, uh, the look, already. You can, see looks, can you see, look, Brian May tore ass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I've looked for that before. That's <laughs> painful, right, isn't it? Right, here we go. There you are. Um, what did Anita Dobson say about that, James? Uh, What's the matter? You have you seen the TARDIS? Before? Right. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm just trying to find which story won't give you the most pop up ads on it. Right. Uh, here you go. That, that's just that's just the, the headline alone will do the, do this for you. There you go. Have a look at that. <laughs> oh, you've sent it, have you? There you are. Yeah. Read it out for the for the for the sake of the listeners, James. Queen's Brian May hospitalised after he tears butt muscles to shreds. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> It was, I bet that it was, was incredibly it was a bizarre painful. Oh, Brian. Yes. The authorities said, best leave it unsolved. <laughs> <laughs> As our friends, the Spinal Tap, will tell us. Anyway, so no, it's not the that, pain Brian is May. is relentless. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny. <laughs> right. So this is the Australian Brian May, 
who had an impressive musical CV, including The Blue Lagoon, Gallipoli. Oh, my God. Something else we had to watch at school. Was at school. And oh, it was God, really yeah. traumatic. It's so is Mel Gibson in that? Yes, he is. Yeah. yeah. He's the I'm one who so doesn't people. die. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> and m- the original Mad Max, more on that in a second, I think. Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, missing in action 2, as in... The Austra- as in Chuck Norris miss- missing an action. Yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> and <laughs> Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Oh. Now, now, incredibly, this was the first Australian movie to cost more than one million Australian dollars to make. You can kind of see that. <laughs> yeah, I think they spent it all on the, the first one. Well, they spent it all on, the pl- on uh, buying a plane and then blowing it up, <laughs> didn't they? Yeah. yeah. All right, so the location was shifted to Australia as a complex tax dodge, of course, allowing English <laughs> investors to completely write off on the whole film. The film is nominated for four Australian Academy of Cinema and Television oh Arts Awards. Oh, my God, really? It, uh, it also won the prize of the International Critics Jury at the Stages International Fantastic Film Festival of Catalonia. Wow. Which, again, sounds like a tax write-off, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, okay, that's it. That's, that's the script done, so I can now get back to looking yeah. at you guys now. Yeah. I can take my glasses off. Sorry to interrupt. Ross here, just doing a quick plug. Did you know that we do a range of General Witchfinders T-shirts? Go to generalwitchfinders.com, buy a shirt and help support the show. Thanks. Right, so this film, only two pages of notes from me. We yeah, and, and me. whip through this in about, about in about five minutes. Look at that. Right, so this film, as we said, clearly is Australia. Although they go out of their way to try and be very nondescript about where it is. Yeah, yeah. They never, nearly it's never everyone talks, named as Australia. Yeah, and pretty much everyone who speaks has got an English accent. Yes. It's pretty much. Yeah. Was, so yeah. it's weird because it's so clearly Australia. And yes. what, I, what I put is that my sis, when my sister got married, she, she uh, went on a honeymoon. Now, this is back in the literally 1999, so just before the turn of the millennium. And she went to Bali. And then on to Australia afterwards. And when she came back, she was the first person uh, alongside my mother, sister Kate, had been to Australia and had been out in the outback. But I said to my other sister Karen, Oh, how was it? How was Sydney? She was uh, the only person I know that. And I she lived went to Australia, James, for months. Yes, but not back then. This Ross, is before. Wait, no. wait. You said 1999. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. And I said to her, What's it like? What's Sydney like? And she said, mm, It's nice, but you feel like you're 20 years in the past. Oh, really? Everything in terms of the fashions. And I thought probably with the internet now, they're caught right up. But in my mind, I've always gotten the idea, this idea that when you go to, the Austra- go to Australia, it's like going into the past a little bit. Yeah. And Incredibly all of the footage of the shops and stuff. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I've got to think, say, yeah, yeah. it's a country or continent or whatever it is that has never held any kind of interest for me whatsoever. Mm. To the point of dislike, active dislike, <laughs> besides TV's Melissa George, <laughs> who was um, Angel in Home and Away and now yes. has does have quite a legitimate film career, follow her on Instagram. She once liked one of my comments. Um, Ooh, lovely. She was in the film Triangle, which is a, a, an absolute masterpiece if you haven't seen that film. She's not the one um, who went, turned to a massive, um, like... Uh... Uh, UKIP person now. No, Ross. No, about that's to Oliver that. Lance. Right. Oliver Lance. <laughs> <laughs> kiss, but, kiss, Oliver Lance. Yes. And Oliver Lance did have her a few good um, records. Cover. Yeah. Is that was it a really? Cover. That was a big in Turkey. Yes. Yeah. My, dad came, back to Turkey. My dad came back from holiday in Turkey, obsessed with that song. <laughs> <laughs> did the turkey know? So, yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah. He, he gets very yeah. weirdly obsessed with like, the, other, the other day he was telling me for quite a long time about when he was in a uh, had to work in London and he went to a, a pub and they was doing karaoke and there was a man and woman there doing a cover of Hadaway's Baby Don't Hurt Me and he said what, it's is most, what a tune yeah. Baby, Baby it Don't Hurt the Me episode tonight. It's one of Don't Hurt Me No, no more. more He said it's one of the best things he ever witnessed in his life whoa, 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 <laughs> Better than the birth of my children Oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> did, did, What was Fergal Sharkey's did, big hit? A good heart. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. Good kicks. Heart these days is That's right. Yeah, he loved that song as well when I was growing up. Yeah. <laughs> right, Falsetto okay. Falsetto all the way oh. through. The one star reviews coming for this one. Yeah, Not just, it is beyond my model. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, 
we start off, it's Australia, and straight away we get this very carefully edited sequence where we get a plane crash. Oh no, and before as- that, the, before that you have that weird kind of recurring, almost like folk horror kind of thing with the children. Children, playing yeah. Playing like, um, um, like, um, Time, Mr. Wolf, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But had- if, you're, if you're John Pountney and you're watching the <laughs> film, what you get is that scene with all the credits and music edited out, so it makes no <laughs> sense until you're 15 minutes into the film mm. when someone has stopped cutting all the bits out. Yeah. And I was watching mm. this thinking, are we, is this right? Like, mm. is this, is this right? Uh, and it wasn't right. But the film is so iffy that it, it took me quite... You wouldn't notice, yeah. No. One so point- what is happening in that first bit? Jenny Agatha, who doesn't say a word in this film until at least the 30th minute, mm. is with a load of children by a swing and stuff, and she's looking up at it like a Cessna plane, isn't yeah. she? But then, mm. and then that happens in the middle of the film and again at the end of Later. the film. Later. Yes. I still don't know what yes. the fuck's happened with it. Okay. Neither did, uh, I, I uh, had no perception. idea. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, because of her psychic, she's kind but of. She, the she, she, like. Having a premonition of the future or something? Yes. Or, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, by the way, one point eight percent of our one point eight point one point eight six percent of our listenership are in Australia. Oh, okay. Oh, right. oh, so I apologise right now. I'll get my <laughs> yeah. Hopefully right that's now. Melissa Sorry. George. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think she lives <laughs> nice. in Paris now, but yeah. maybe she still identifies as Australia. Mm, you know, wow. how many people go to France? Yeah. One point anyway. eight. Uh, yes. Wow. Uh, 0.37% are in France, so that might be... Wow! I wonder if they're in Arles, where I went with my um, French exchange in 1991. Uh, it's uh, Paris. Uh, How the hell well, does it really well, yeah, bring all I, this stuff up? Yeah, Paris, I, Le Grey, Gra- G-R-A-I-S. Then G-R-A-I... Le Grey? Yeah. Yeah, then the... Uh, oh, Le yeah. Grey? Yeah. I, I, really, I really hope it's my fantastic former colleague. What am yeah. I? Who is a French teacher? French. Oh, lovely! Yeah, yeah. and has as now and now lives in France. Mm. So you know, maybe. Could be. Um, yeah. So we have that, but then we have that the the plane crash, which yes, is pretty impressive, uh, and they definitely milk. And I I find I beg to differ, Cleves. But the bit where the people are hanging, <laughs> you don't actually see it crash. You see it like moving slowly while someone's hanging onto like a, a tree. <laughs> but when it starts exploding. That's when it's good. The that, fire, yeah. the pyrotechnics in it are, are really so good. So I've read my, my notes start, no titles, because I thought mm. genuinely this film started without a title sequence or credits. Then I looked up who had directed it and remembered it's David Hemmings. So I was kind of excited by that because I, I do like a lot of David Hemmings films. To be fair to him, he did a terrible job with this film. Um, <laughs> and then I've said it starts like Emmerdale. Oh, I, yeah. Do, remem- do we remember? <laughs> The infamous I've never Emmerdale. Seen an of Emmerdale. Oh my god! Oh, so in about yeah, 92, 93, very controversially, around the time mm. that my grandmother had a go at the producer of Emmerdale Farm oh. <laughs> on TV's Kilroy <laughs> because they dropped the farm from the from Emmerdale, mm. they culled a huge amount of the cast by having a Russian plane crash in mm. Beckendale. Mm. Um, so now, I, and I looked up this recently. Actually, the the, the um, after the plane crash in Beckendale, the village was renamed Emmerdale to get rid of the um, memory of the horrific events of that plane crash. Um, so Beckendale doesn't exist now. The village is now called Emmerdale, where it just used to be the farm. Which is interesting. Quite interesting. Oh, okay. And so this yes, was, that plane crash was very reminiscent, wasn't it, of the Lockerbie plane crash? Well, that was the vibe, wasn't it? That was very, very controversial at the mm. time. That literally only about five years after Lockerbie, they yes. turned it into a soap storyline. Yes, which was very, uh, which probably I'd be quite interested to rewatch. Actually, I remember <laughs> it being qu- being quite well done at the time. Um, with the special effects. I remember the wool pack particularly suffering quite badly, and the gambler in the wool pack was crushed by a beam, I think. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Was, it, was, it a, was it on is... a par with the clip of the um, the beer still blowing up in East End, as you sent me on? <laughs> yeah, when you... <laughs> it's, right. it's about on a level with yeah. that. I mean, the plane crash at the start of this film is a lot of very slow, locked-off camera shots yes. of a slowly moving jumbo jet um and 
people in seats screaming, but it's not like, you know, when they used to do on the Starship Enterprise that they'd move in time with the camera to make it look like they were, no one is doing that on this plane. So it just looks like it's taxiing along before it's even taken off. Then it kind of crashes in inverted commas, but then is the bit that's kind of, kind of impressive where obviously they've spent the whole budget on huge pyrotechnics. Yeah. Mm. And then they have a lot of, um, I felt, good yes. footage of, of almost like documentary style, style yes. footage of them um, going through all the rubble and like finding bodies and, and stuff like that. And that made me, it, it made me think a bit of like sort of Spielberg type films. Yes. And I, maybe it's just like the same kind of lenses and stuff they were using. Mm. But I thought, I felt all that part was really quite well done. And, and like we said, no dialogue until um, we get uh, uh, Tim Rice turning up sort of, sort of commentating it for the news. Yes, and that's yes. where the film starts to lose all Coherence. conception of reality. I mean, yes. you're introduced to characters without dialogue in the plane. So there's a little girl with a doll. There's an old man smoking a cigar or something, maybe. Yeah. There's Robert Powell, who's, who, who's, who is emitting such unforgettable lines as drop the fuel. Or, <laughs> it's just, it starts in a really inauspicious strange mm. way where you're not really introduced to the characters and mm. then you're straight into a plane crash which isn't very well choreographed which is a really odd plane crash yes they kind of suggest that he's landed it and it's like taxiing along and yes. then, it, then street, explodes. It? yeah and then it's in a field and and that's my no- weird explosion it blows yes. up in a way that you wouldn't and again this is dreadful you know modern world history has told us this but from yeah. now, you know after 9 11 we've yes. seen what happens when planes crash into things as yeah. they, it doesn't look anything like this. No, no, no. Uh, explosions don't go off in a line, do they? into the field and goes, boom, exactly, yeah. and blows up in a line. Yes. <laughs> but you also are introduced to other characters who then you never see again, like a guy in a green jacket who's in like a 7-Eleven store kind of setup. Yeah. All these people like rush out of of what looks oh, he's like... he's a photographer. He's a photographer. No, it's, it's a different no, guy. somebody else, right. Ross. It's a different guy. That's what I thought. So is it the guy who's he's looting later on and then dies on the... No, um, no, no, no. That's the crash site ghoul. It's literally just like a guy that you see a few times who looks a bit like the man who has sex with Jamie Lee Curtis in the, in the fog. Yeah. Uh, in the vest, <laughs> and, and you're like, oh, okay, who's but this? This is guy? what and makes me think that this film was just really badly edited, or they didn't get enough footage. Because it- I think, yeah, it, it's more. I think mm. it's more a case of they didn't shoot enough to then cut it together in a cohesive or, or um, yeah, it just makes no sense. Yeah. Then, so then, basically, we have scenes where a photojournalist just happens mm. to live next to the crash site. Mm-hmm. He rushes back to it, yes. see his girlfriend, gets more film. He needs more film, as he keeps saying to mm-hmm. Yeah. So they run to the crash site. Um, he's just allowed in willy-nilly to take photos. Tim Rice turns up, fresh from writing Phantom of the Opera <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> what, Ibiza? He's, Ibiza. he's just about to fire out Ibiza at this point, John. <laughs> <laughs> Featuring David Essex as Che Guevara. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a circus. Oh, what a show. Oh, so just before he was made um, the head of the Gypsy town. Council. Yeah. <laughs> David Essex, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> anyway, sorry, yeah. Um, but I think like, when it all kept, just soon after something like that would happen, you would have no one have a control over what, who's got access to the site and people, people well, turn it up and... I don't know. I, 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 uh, I found it pushed so realism to the point to make points that it doesn't really need to make where he's like photographing doll that's on fire and stuff. Yeah. And just corpses. Taking Corps, lots of pictures he, yeah, of he's corpses. Taking, yeah, which is very strange. And in, then, in the book, it's, um, it's like a uh, like school photographer sort of company and the guy just takes yeah. advantage of the fact that's happened. Yes. Takes those pictures, but then he starts... Um, and it's a it's a Jewish guy, and it's a really like um, anti-Semitic stereotype in in the book. Um, the guy doing lots of like Yiddish sort of stuff, but then oh, yeah. and like make and trying to make as much money as he possibly can out of selling all these oh, photographs and stuff. And yeah, so it's it's, it's, it's Ro- not it's, Ross, it's, it's, it's not very bearing good. in mind where this fi- this film goes through. Do they is it like anything to do with being a golem? No, or anything like that. Oh. <laughs> well, as you said that, I thought, okay, the whole thing of, uh, you know, uh, an 
inanimate body being yes. raised to life to... Are oh, you spoiling the ending now, Jake? Bring about revenge. Uh. <laughs> oh, come on. As if anyone's listening to this, like, oh, what might happen here? Yeah. Anyway, well, yeah, but yeah. That's where we see Robert Powell just appear, like, yes. everyone's dead, and, and but he just, he's unharmed and just walks out of the flames. Is that what happens? Because I can't remember seeing him come out of the flames. I don't know if I'm watching the, the wrong version at this point. No, he, d- he, does, he just does appear out of the, out of the flames. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and he's unhurt. And um, uh, Matthew Holness's brilliant Garth Marenghi, which we've spoken about before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His latest book starts off with what I now understand to be a riff, a, a riff on this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, if he's just like, the, the characters are walking away from his second plane crash. Right. And he's the only survivor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm like, like oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I see. He, well, maybe Farage is like, dead, <laughs> been dead all along, and he's just well, he's got some unfinished business. His soul is certainly dead. Yeah. Yes. It? It is Incarcerat, I think, is the uh, is the second book that is it. Teratome was the first one, yeah, and then Incarcerat. It's in Incarcerat. Well, that's that's it's quite a nice shot of like seeing like bits of like clothing in the trees and stuff. Um, yes, I thought that was which a- they which they also did in yeah. Emmerdale. <laughs> and I have got to say, in defence of this film, and I will expand upon this later, but in defence of this film. It is shot. Whoever is the DOP does a really good job because it actually looks really mm. good. Yeah, I think it's the story itself and a lot of the direction that lets it down. Some fantastic lighting, especially yeah, you know, later on. Um, yeah, but then you have this, uh, and again, mm. w- once you know when you're watching the film for a second time, um, mm. there's lots of little clues in this. What's the name of the main character? Keller. So the main character mm. is Keller. Who? Um, what's the name of the actor? Robert Powell is playing Keller. Robert Powell. He wakes yes. up in an overexposed white room. It's very yes. much he- <laughs> heaven, isn't it? When, in in, now, in, in yeah, the hospital. Yeah. Yes. But there's also a bit where he shouts nurse for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> and it just cuts away. <laughs> so what um, do we... So and- if he is already dead at that point, what do we think... Well, is he some kind of what? What is the point? Well, I can tell you what the point in the book is, but there's no point. There's no fucking point in the film because he he is interacting yeah. with living people in this film, is it? People. Or is it in, or including is, the woman he was having an affair with? Yes, he goes, yes. goes to see her, and, and, that, <laughs> and, that, and then she disappears for the rest of the film, yep. and none of that the makes film. sense. Okay, yes, so yeah. I'm going to sort of go on. So in the in the book, he's not yeah. the pilot; he's the co-pilot. Oh, yes, okay, and he's lost his memory, and there's lots of red herrings to sort of like, it's the first half of it's like, who, because they, they kind of get to the conclusion that there was a bomb on the plane. Uh, but yes. they're trying to work out mm-hmm. who it is. So, and he starts his memory, and then he starts think, thinking, well, maybe he did it and he's forgotten. Um, uh, that's quite a good idea. Um, but then they, uh, and it's the pilot's um, wife he goes to see, uh, who's been having an affair. And then he has oh. memories of, his, of the pilot being really angry with him. And before they, and he oh. thinks, oh, did we have an argument? And uh, first of all, did, did we have an argument? And then the crash pain crashed the because of that. <laughs> or did did he like go mad and then try to blow, commit suicide by by a bomb in, in the plane? Um, yeah. And and then there's this whole thing about again like Jewish um, uh, uh, terrorists potentially oh, uh, doing it as well. Oh. So there's more sort of um, 1970s oh, anti-Semitism in, in it on that. But there's this whole kind of like who done it kind of thing going on. Mm, um, yes. And that's why they got this whole, and also it's a way of him having a flashback sex scene of him having sex with uh, oh, the pot. Jesus <laughs> um, and, 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 and talking about uh, her um, schoolgirl breasts in it and stuff. And, and oh all, my you know, God. Yeah, crude. Um, and oh, just, and just saying, you know, terrible. even though she's in her thirties, you know, she still looks quite youthful. So he does quite fancy her. And, oh my God. Uh, it's just, yeah. Lordy. He, um, I was surprised there was no sex scenes in this film, actually, because uh, bearing in mind when it's from, mm. it's like every mm. film from that era had to have something. That's, what, that's in, why I thought they changed the sex for the dads of, of, um, yeah. yes. of Hobbs into a Jenny Agatha. I thought yeah. there was yeah. going to be a, a well, considering it's Jenny Agatha. Yes, definitely. Um, mm. So I have written Cotton is back, mm. and then I've written Would you let a crash victim onto the site the next no, day? No, you wouldn't. Or just let walk. <laughs> So he's been in hospital, he's been in a bed, they've looked at him, he's shouted nurse, and then the next day in the in the timeline of the film, he's back looking mm. at having a poke around yep. the crash site. 
the crash site at that point would be forensically closed, wouldn't it? Wouldn't have people mm. going through it, and stealing even in the, bottles of yeah, whiskey. Even in the seventies, it wouldn't have idiots blundering around. Especially this photojournalist guy who was yeah. just allowed in with his camera, which is a practica. And I've got to point out to camera mm. nerds out there, practica is literally besides a Zenit. Um, which was made in the USSR, Praktika is the shittest camera brand of all time. And <laughs> any photojournalist wouldn't, a professional photographer wouldn't have a Praktika, it, and it's just stupid. Yeah. Um, but then, so uh, so what happens then? Basically, I've then said 20 minutes in, and I have no idea what Jenny Agatha is doing. So, like, she, no one has dialogue until, like, no. 25 minutes in. No, no she, she, she keeps turning up, and then they yeah. keep playing this, like, woo! sort of sound effect <laughs> which is later on they, they say that that's the sound of a death rattle but it, it's like a f- yeah. oh I hear the sound oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ah, that's what he's got for <laughs> is that um is that the Rolf Harris thing is it you are is that the stylophone is that a stylophone <laughs> no it's the one I had before oh, then, when we did um, yeah, yeah, yeah. the shout there's, a, there's quite mm. a few of that sort of sound effects going so, on so yeah it's always Jenny Agatha like yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. It's basically that, isn't it? And yeah. it's like, but yeah. there's no explanation or kind of, I mean, there's a few, uh, let's carry on anyway. Yeah. So it's explained as amnesia, isn't it? And yeah, he's but in like, the book, they try and get him yes. to be a pilot again a couple of days after he's done it. <laughs> and, he's, on, get- and he's like, and they're going, and get back he, up there. And then he's like, yeah. oh, I, can't, I can't do it. And it's so, like falling off a bike, isn't yeah. it? The best thing and to they do said, is oh, get back on. Yeah, exactly. They said, you just need to get back up there. If I, yeah. And, but he goes to see his mate. His mate is one of the um, investigators, and his mate mm. is kind of like, I should be telling you this, but I think it's a bomb. And they just say, <laughs> Oh. And um, he, and they say that um, this guy, it was a, um, he, he always goes a bit rogue. He, he like comes up with a theory and then tries to make the, um, the, the facts fit the, the theory, but, but the thing is, Rogue investigator. Yeah, but he's always <laughs> right. Uh, um, Amazing. Yeah. But it's all in, yeah, like wow. it's all in Eaton. So that, and there's bits that I feel like they're just lifted out of like a guidebook of Eaton. And like there's descriptions <laughs> yeah. of like mm. uh, what the roads are, yeah. what the d- certain like carvings on different buildings are and stuff. Yeah. Or- you stumble into a scene then where the photojournalist um, happens across him being reunited with his um the woman he's having an affair with uh, yeah i mm. don't know what you mistress let's say yeah. yes. for the sake of a better phrase um which happens outside on a balcony you've no explanation why or how the photojournalist has managed to just pop up there yep. and just find them in a, mm. a random you know city address um it, and then he <laughs> yep. it, it, he's shown as being kind of Hidden in bushes, but then Robert Powell kicks off, and he's literally just right next to them, just yeah. clicking away. Yeah. And it's like it's like something up the like little and large or something. Yeah, yeah. It just makes no sense. And then he um, Robert Powell goes to punch him and calls him a little shit, <laughs> throws his camera in a bush, and then yeah. kicks the guy's ass yeah. like down some steps. But for the whole time, this guy doesn't emit one word of dialogue. Mm. Which makes you think, like, he's like Tracy on EastEnders. He's like not – if if he says a line, they're going to have to pay him more or something. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then they, just, then they just laugh with each other. Like, <laughs> yeah, but then you you cut to him looking for his camera, and there's an obviously dubbed line, which I couldn't make – I played it back about three times, where it says something about having an affair with the airline boss. <laughs> uh-huh. But you can't hear what they're saying. Mm. And we then get, as John has already previously mentioned, the most open crash scene in the universe, it seems, <laughs> to our you know, Aus- Aus- Australian police force. It reminded me in many, many ways of like when we uh, when we watched uh, Quasimass. We were just like, yes. Yes. it's a crashed rocket and people were just wandering on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, their yeah. pyjamas. Sort of I thought stuff. of that. Just, just walk on. Just walk on, yeah. guys. Yeah, and then we get that there's the crash site ghoul that someone yeah. has gone, oh, I'll tell you what, mate, um, there's been a plane crash. There's uh, <laughs> been a big explosion of uh, aviation fuel. But I better tell you what, there's probably going to be a couple of few things there that are- Duty free, I, mate. Duty free. I can get <laughs> on on that. And that's exactly what happens, <laughs> that he finds in the, uh, the baggage of a dead man a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> which he then like attempts to spirit away. However, one of the uh, probably two Australian policemen spots yeah. him and uh, basically 
he accosts him for stealing from the dead, thus making yes. him an official ghoul. Yes. Of course. And we point that out because that comes back later on. Yeah, but yes. what they're doing here, they they're what? giving these people like um uh, some kind of sin so that they they have yes. a reason to be killed by the the spirits. Uh, so but uh, yes. Oh. Because in short, dear listener, here we go. Here's yeah. plot point number 1. Anyone who has profited from the deaths of anything to do with this plane crash is I killed. See. Mm. There you go. So that's like part one of the I didn't get that. Film. I have literally written down why are the spirits <laughs> why do yes, the spirits that, that, become that's vengeful? What it is. This is a trope that, that you get lots in horror, which is like yes. the wronged spirit is back. And how yeah, they yeah. manifest this spirit initially is from this dead girl. Yes. Who we do see is all burned later on. But once again, because of the budget involved, even though Terrible incredibly makeup. the most expensive Australian film ever. Yeah. The, the makeup isn't in any way, shape, or form disturbing or scary. Well, no, they've painted her brown. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've painted, painted, they've painted her, face her brown. brown. And I put down that when the girl turns up to torment and sort of summon to his death the photographer, like I put down this could be really creepy and good, but instead she's just like just generally stood behind them. And I've put it's really hard to build up any horror vibes in broad Australian sunlight. <laughs> Because it's all filmed at like midday, and it's really yes. bright. Yeah, and it's got that it's sound no... of that bird you always heard in the background when they showed the outside of Lassiter's uh, kookaburra, <laughs> mate. Probably a kookaburra. I'm you're gonna gal- say, you're great, galah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the phot- so yes, that's what we see. We then see that the photographer um, who had taken all of those pictures of the crash site, like, yes. oh, come back, come back, young girl, and then sort of chases after her. And then I've just put rubbish train related death. Yeah, he's yeah. he is summoned to his death. Far the, fir- too the, the first reasonably. bit of that sequence is quite creepy, where her hand reaches up to touch his hand. But after that, yes. it goes to pot a bit. So what, yeah. My my notes around this stage are mini moke. Yes, um, someone turns up in a mini moke, which okay. is like the <laughs> official aircraft investigation vehicle. Yeah, it's like a mini moke with a flag on the back, which I just think yeah. is amazing. Like, why would you have that for a crash site? Um. And then I've written 30 minutes in, there's been no horror. Yeah. Mm. For, the, for at least the first 30 Correct. minutes of this film, there's no horror at all, is there? No. Um, well, interesting, interesting, John, that we don't, just to show you that I'm not making it up, yeah. 33 minutes. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> what so then, so they, then I've they, written... They, they've cut out, lo- like, again, in the book, loads of like, stuff that's happened by this point, and they just cut yes. it all out. And I think yes. that's what they were saying. Do they go to the gory side of things, or do they try and keep it a little bit more like spooky and stuff like that. And I think mm. it's to its detriment uh, 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 that nothing scary is happening at this point. But I thought they had made it gory. I thought that was the issue. No, they it was, had. No, it was the other way around. They, they took oh. the gore out. Oh, right. Mm. So I, and then I've written, and I can't remember what the sequence is. Can Agatha hear the screams? Yes. Well, that's, that's a bit where she's running along, like, along the river to go to a houseboat, which is full of stone cherubs for some reason. Nice. Oh, and, why why does a fisherman get drowned? Okay, because that's the man who... <laughs> because through... he's the ghoul, Ross, uh, yeah. John. Yeah. Oh. He's the ghoul who <laughs> stole I the whiskey. Because I didn't recognise him at all, and I was like, this isn't usually, like, vicious on a guy who's just, like, going for a, a fish. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't... Well, and that's, that's why it's that whole thing of, oh, that's why they went out of their way to show you him stealing from the crash site. Yeah. So I he see. would then be... The next victim yes. of vengeance. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, mm. this is so kind of. But you don't uh, see. What, what, uh, he just seems to like then. struggle and then fall in the water and drown. Yeah. Ah! You don't see yeah. any of like in the, the ha- all the hands dragging him down and stuff. Because they, no. yeah. <laughs> they couldn't afford then, it. And then, But then it's <laughs> weird that all the water runs out of the lake that he's in. Mm. And then his boat is just on the bottom of a dry lake and he looks at his wine glass and then looks mm. to the camera and then it cuts to the next scene. <laughs> which, which James Bond <laughs> film is that? I don't know. I oh. can't remember either. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> the, 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 double take man, isn't it? Yes. They were very it's, pleased it's, with that joke. It's all, the, it's all the Roger Moore ones, but I can't remember I am which re- yes. I'm reading what, um, My Word is My Bond, uh, the uh, Amazing. Roger Moore mm. autobiography. And there was a point when um, his first flat in uh, LA, um, yeah. they had a shared mm. swimming pool and he shared it with William Shatner. <gasps> Oh my god, wow, that's, that's, a, that's amazing, a sitcom to be it? made, isn't it? Oh, that's when the 20th a... century peaks. Yeah. Let's face what, it. yeah, it is. What a <laughs> pair of absolute legends. <laughs> legends. Um, right. So, 
After this, they then decide to have the memorial, which once again, because they obviously needed to use this set, having spent so much money on it, yeah. <laughs> who has the memorial literally the where, your dead, where your loved yeah. ones are feet away from you? Yeah, and I think they're yeah. still, still, they're, still the away. they're still pulling out like <laughs> yeah, burnt corpses and stuff. Yeah, uh, but, and they're, they're, and they're doing a tannoy announcement: so don't burn any flowers where the yeah, flags yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, that's don't, where, don't, the, bo- that's don't where the bodies get too are. Close. <laughs> To any of the flags, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but there's Five. a bit that really um, remind me of Jaws at that point, where the a, a, a mother yes. Yes. sees um, uh, Robert Powell and just like, you know, it's not fair that you survived. You shouldn't have survived. And, yes, yeah, yeah. But Robert but, Powell what? just walks away and doesn't really and do reacts. any acting. Yeah, turns <laughs> up in a what? really fake looking uh, captain's uniform as <laughs> yeah, well, like Thunderbirds. Yeah. Well, and what it made me think of, and again, in the whole kind of having to pad this one out slightly because it's a very thin gruel of a film, um, <laughs> is that I put the vibes of him turning up at the funeral is like John Landis turning up at the funeral of those dead kids <laughs> <laughs> after the, the, the uh, Twilight Zone movie, yeah. which just in case, dear listener, in case you're unfamiliar with this, John Landis, the film director, the guy who directed... Did we talk about this when we yes, did American yeah, we World did, in London? Yeah, we've yeah, talked yeah. about this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that he was responsible for the deaths of three people after being told by health and safety people, do not do this. Mm. Yeah. People died. They were cut to bits by a <laughs> by crashing bloody helicopter. Yeah. Yeah. And then Landis had the balls to turn up at their funeral yeah. going, oh, I'm really sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> which I still find one of the most remarkable things it's bizarre, ever. Bizarre, isn't it? Mm. So it's a bit like that. So I've just put down John Landis vibes <laughs> for that scene. Yeah. <laughs> he just turned up. Sorry, everyone. Sorry I killed everybody, you know. But here I am. So yes. Right. Yeah. And I've then put in 53 minutes in, boring. <laughs> Not much is happening. And then I've then put, hopefully Jenny Agatha can now speed this up a bit. Yeah, but all she is is really cryptic. Get- like this, well, never there's still no horror, really, is yeah. there? She gets chased by like sound effects, um, and and then, <laughs> uh, well, and Robert then, Powell goes to see her, and she yes. basically says these the spirits of all the people on the plane are, you know, they I'm they trapped. need yeah. they're they're trapped. You must help. Yeah. yeah, surely you can hear them. And he's like, "Oh, this is mad." And then she freaks out and starts attacking him. Yeah. <laughs> but at this point, doesn't she realise that he is already dead? Because my no. thought from quite early on is that he's already dead and he's a ghost. All right. Okay. Oh wow, you called it. You yeah. Called yes. It. I, I didn't. Ca- I didn't. I didn't well, get that. Um, my one from that is in terms of, and again, I'm sure. Sh- I'm sh- like they do on Countdown in this country. Show, show your workings. workings. Yeah. My notes say. I'm going to guess that it's the arsehole from the plane company that was responsible <laughs> for this. Yes. <laughs> and he's, he bas- right. he's basically the guy in Aliens, isn't he? Yeah, who's but for, like, for no reason. Yes, it's Kurt, Kurt who are no in reason. Aliens, who's like, oh, that's correctly said. We've come here, we're going to get the alien. You, yes, you're, all, you're all expendable and it's fine. Yeah. John, do you know that the Paul Reiser, the actor who was Carter yes. Burke in Aliens, has done a comic saying, what if he didn't die? <laughs> Like a Marvel what if. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I was like, <laughs> but what that, would have happened? Because, um, yeah, yeah. Like what if they did manage to get the aliens and take them back to Alien right, But within about 10 yeah. minutes of him dying in that film, they nuke the site from space, That's right. don't they? That's right. I haven't even read it. I get, and once again, <laughs> William Shatner's done a whole got. series of books saying, oh, oh Captain Kirk didn't We're die. Didn't die. Generation. Yes. <laughs> and, we know that. And also, again, making our one listener turn off at this point, they kind of established that, don't they, Ross? In when uh, on the, the clip show, we spoke about this on the in, last series of Picard. Yeah, when they go into oh, like the museum, yeah, and they've kind of got the body of James T. Kirk in inverted commas. Yeah, it's suspended and, uh, animation. Said, oh, yeah, God. yeah, yeah, yeah. They they obviously just ready to bring him out at some point. Anyway, yeah. anyway, anyway, oh, I'd like yes. to see that. Oh yeah, do so, John. It's good. It's good. I need to anyway. watch that. Yeah. Right. So after that, we then get the the spirit of vengeance continues, and then ke- gets the uh, the girlfriend of the photographer as well mm-hmm. in the yes. dark room. Yes, this is where gen- uh, chopped off. Mm. This is where I dipped out because my um, dear listener, my um, I had quite a stressful day today that I broke yes. my glasses this morning, so they're super glued together. Then my bank card stopped working, and then on the way back from the garden centre. 
my driver's side window fell out <laughs> and into in didn't break but fell out inside the car door it's the spirits so, it's the spirits <laughs> of the plane the vengeful the vengeful spirits were really annoyed with me for mm. watching this film um so i dipped out at this point because my mental health was suffering mm. is that so you didn't say any more further from this point in well, I watched the ending oh, okay. and I couldn't make head and a tail of what was going on at the ending. Besides, it looked like the video of um, Take My Breath Away by Berlin. Well, well, he kept, kept yes. turning the lights on as he was walking towards yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes no sense. He just spouts a load of gibberish. It yes. makes no he sense. Yeah. Okay. That so well, when we say he, nonsense. we should explain who. Who so essentially, the boss. Yeah. The, the, the guy who is looking, uh, who's in charge of the flight investigation, there's a point yes. where he goes into the plane and he hears the sound. And yes, it, and he bangs his face, and then after he's got a Ooh. thing on there, and I feel yeah. like it's implied at that point he's been possessed. Well, because, oh, I I'm... I watched that part, and I said large large parts of the film are invisible. I watched that sequence, and there's about five minutes where you can't see anything. It's just anything. totally black, yes. and it's like there's who a who lot of people. This? I put an, <laughs> another scene of dimly lit crash scene meandering, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's like people just scenes. walking through. People Depressing. walk through wreckage and then into yeah. the plane, and then it's black for like three minutes, yeah. and you're like, yeah. "What the fuck is going the on?" The most expensive Australian film of all time. Yeah. <laughs> to that point, yeah, but to, that, that point to that point, yeah. James, I'm yes, sure that yes, um, yes, yes. Crocodile Dundee two, I'm sure, surpassed this in terms of. Um, well, well yeah. I think the movie Australia. Yes. Anyway, what happens? Let, in let, let's move on. I can't remember. Not much. <laughs> They, they, they. It was so bad. They, but they let like, make a TV series based off of it, which was equally as bad. Jesus. But anyway, yeah. anyway. So, yeah, so Slater, who's the investigator, he's based. He's uh, so Hobbs becomes possessed. Um. Uh, mm, so then yes. says he. Then they go to get some help from the the vicar to say that we need yes. you to um oh. re uh sort of like relive the events of the crash so you can I see what happened. That part, what happened. Yeah. And that's where yes. you find out that they what what happened. There was a bomb on the plane. Yeah. Um, yes. And uh, the the <laughs> husband of the woman who's having an affair with weird. had a bomb on the plane, but it, it, yes. it wasn't him who who brought it on. But it was in his, Put his suitcase. The bomb on the plane. Then you see one of the other um, investigators filing a bit of uh, of a briefcase, that, and of, it, it's implied that he realizes from doing that which bag had the bomb in it. Uh, bomb in it. Um, yes. But then they said earlier that oh, we we've, we've got these fragments which suggest a bomb. Yeah. But then it's like. It's kind of implied that the Slater guy then kills the other investigator because he feels that that's going to yes. be incriminating. But how? There's no, there's yes. no link to him at all at that None. point. Um, and then he he starts calling himself the Hunter, and and it's almost, that's why I think he's implying he's possessed. And also, I've got knowledge of what's in the in the book. But then, mm. and he kind of like, does this whole thing. He he shoots um, uh, Robert Powell, kills him. <laughs> and then the wreckage of the plane just catch, catches fire, doesn't it? And, yeah. then, and there's really. And he's yes. burnt. They're both burnt alive, Hold then, on. aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ross, I think you really, as you said, really need to point out the, the, uh, the couple of things. Number one, earlier on, there's also a scene when the other crash investigator, the one that is killed by the, turns out to be the bad guy, mm, Kelsey Priest. Mustachioed. Owed bad guy. Who is in charge of the airline? No, Press he's a head head of the investigations. Okay, but okay, all right. Okay, so he's the head on show. Um, but they also they say, how could it be that Robert Powell has walked out of this? Mm-hmm. Because as the pilot, he should have been on the flight deck, mm. and there's yes. no way that he could have got off of this. So they once again, as we said earlier on, they give you numerous clues to the fact and, that maybe not all is. As and they keep amazing. showing the the um the cockpit and going. Wah, 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 yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. John. Yeah, and then so as you see, he oh, admits know. Robert Powell turns up, confronts him. We then get the weirdest, most abstracts. It is the weirdest. Most I'm gonna, abstracts. I'm gonna put the dialogue in to the edit now because it makes no fucking sense. You were not supposed to survive, Keller. None of you were. What brought you here? The voices. Can't you hear them? They surround you, holding me for your arrival. It's a beautiful object, isn't it? Play. Now, pieces. 
You were one of those plotting to end my career. I built up this airline. It's mine to keep or destroy. You planted a bomb in Rogan's case. Cameron, the man of emotional detachment, the man of science and technology, the deducer. I knew it would be you, Captain. First Tucson and then you. I've seen Tucson. I killed Tucson. He was beginning to know too much. Hours to build. Hours to admire. And hours to destroy. This clutter of yours, these chattering friends, they hang on my wall. And on my wall they are. You murdered 300 innocent people. Why? I would like to know why. Revenge. I have the imagination for the kill. Ants crushed by the thousand when the elephant falls. Why should I feel something for nothing? 300 no bodies. Perfectly timed. Rogan was predictable. Sad trait. You managed well. You survived. Some of the others would have too, but for the fire. But you didn't predict their power. They haven't left you, have they? The hunter, or whatever you call this mindless being that you are, is helpless because they won't leave you alone. They want you, Captain, not me, the last one. I merely stare in wonder at an elegant totality. I see it, I want it. If they wish to wreak their vengeance on me because you eluded them, so be it. But the preternatural is a tiresome edict for a practical man to comprehend. Then we've both learned something, haven't we? And we shall both have to compensate for the experience. The death rattle. The death rattle that will quiet when the last nerve has been twitched. Now it's your turn. I just freestyled Great. that, guys. Nice. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> um, and then I just, I just put, um, what a surprise. It was him all along. Why? No idea. Mm. <laughs> and there is, it is not expressed to the, the viewer no. in any way, shape, or um, form. Why this guy wanted to blow up his own plane? Yes. His airline's own plane? In, in what Wikipedia, Wikipedia cool. claims that he's done it so he, he he was doing it so he could take control of the airline. Oh, okay. Oh, oh man, it'd be nice if that, that and, and he's that like, isn't explained in the film at all, is it? In no, any way, no. Um, when you see it, you see someone coming out of the flames at the end, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Is that Robert Powell? No, it's the, it's no, the other guy. It's, that's the bad guy. Yeah, it's because Slater. Wikipedia it's claims that, he goes that, like, that is Robert Powell. No, it's but not. No, no. And no. I, so at that point, I was very confused as to what was going on, but then there is. A um, coda at the end, yes. isn't there? Yeah, and you, you, you they find the payoff. Yeah, that um, Robert Powell's body was is in the cockpit, and he's been dead the whole time. Yes, whole all time. along. Which I have put what as if they wouldn't have looked in the fucking <laughs> cockpit. But, that's, yes. but the guy said that's impossible, and then yes. then then they cut back to the um 
the plane flying over yes. the negative and the ghost children, which is something yes. that happens in the middle yes. of the film as well. Which we, you've, we s- you've seen, we, yes. we forgot to mention that part. You see him f- yes. fly, fly like a fixed wing aircraft, don't That's you, in the middle yes. of the plane? Yeah. That he's kind of, um, what's he doing? He's kind of uh, familiarizing like back on himself. The horse, yeah, 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 yeah. He wants to make sure that he's okay to fly. S- yeah. So, he and is. then, yeah. So, uh, the effect, the makeup on him at the end is quite effective, yeah. actually. But it does. Yes. It's 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 fucking sick so, as well. Really <laughs> weird. In that Australian heat. Oh god. And, and yeah. then a few people go, but that's impossible. Yes. But then you think all of the people, like the people at the service, yep. yeah. all saw him. Yeah. Various people at the hospital would have seen yeah. him. Mm. And everyone's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of shrugged yeah. off. And this would this, the, and it, the, it would the, have been the in the, and in the book, he's in newspapers and stuff as well. Yes. So therefore, oh my god, if this did happen, this would be a yeah. documented uh, would freak uh, thing with, yeah. with multiple um, witnesses of a man coming back yeah. from the dead, walking so around. In the film, do you think there's a case for Jenny Agatha placing his dead, burnt body in the plane after she's seen? No. No? No, I no. don't think so. Because I was questioning if that, that's what had happened, okay. because otherwise, how is he in the plane? Beside the mm. fact that it's a made-up story <laughs> and, it, and it makes no sense. It, make, it just makes no sense. <laughs> Look, the... Okay, so do you want to know what happened in the book? If you yeah, can summarise on. it in one paragraph. Okay, there was a guy who had a, a company which made some kind of like special engines, and he got bought out by the, the the man who ran the airline. Yes. Um, basically, he sort of ripped him off. So this yes. guy had like a vengeance right. against him. Also, this, the, the the guy, um, he has some kind of disease, so his he had to tape his eyelids open. So mm. otherwise, um, his eye, he couldn't keep his eyelids open. So that's that's another sort of... Oh, kind of I know how it feels. Right. Yeah, anyway. Um, Watching this film, I felt like that. So he plants, he swaps the, um, he puts a bomb in the, the guy who runs the airline's uh, bag and swaps bag so essentially that's that's why the bomb happened but mm. what so what's the, what also happens is there is a guy on the plane who is like the equivalent of alistair crowley he's like a, 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 a <laughs> he turns out like he's a big sort of Jesus. like you know a cultist black magic okay. guy so and he dies in the plane crash and but he, because he's so like evil this guy and powerful yeah, yeah he stops all the um he he stops all the spirits of the people on the plane from leaving yeah. or going mm. to the afterlife and he's cult keeping them all to him so there's a kind of like that's why all the ghosts are there and it's like no. and um he's like a demon who's then going around and um using the spirits of the um of the uh of the ghosts to kill loads of people in Eton they bring Keller back from the dead in order to kill the man kill the man who did who put the bomb in the plane in order for wow. them to be set free but at, at the at the last minute he he doesn't kill him he he refuses to do it Ugh. but something yeah. happens so that the guy accidentally it kills anyway so then he ends up going to heaven with all the spirits of the of the people and stuff like that does he fly them in a plane uh, no <laughs> but they go, so that so it, that at least it's made up, but it makes sense, and and there's a like it, it kind of makes mm. sense why things are happening. Whereas I feel like in the in the film, all that stuff is cut out, and it's it yes, so nothing all makes, over the show doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, um, mental. But I'm just going to tell you some of the things which they did change Hang as well. On. So, um, so Hobbs <laughs> is a, a a man, a medium, yeah. um, in mm. this, and he, he's someone not who, a large. Oh yeah, yeah, I get it. yeah. Um, but he's he's someone he, who try he's trying to stop being a medium because when he does mediumship, they take over his body. Yes. Right. Um. So he goes to Keller and said, like, the spirits are trying; uh, they need you to do something. <laughs> <laughs> so that they do, but they do like a seance. But then, like the 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 demon guy, the the cultist takes over and starts like going like and all this kind of stuff wow. and attacking him. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to beat that out. Yeah, you'll have to beat the word out. <laughs> That's just for us. That's just for me. Right, um, okay. But then he ends up like smashing a, a glass and like smashing himself in the face of it. So oh, wow. And okay. all, all that kind of stuff. Um, That's good. But so <laughs> the, 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 the photographers, there's two photographers, they get killed in, in, uh, in different ways. Right. Um, like the omen. Yeah. yeah. But the, um, 
the person who gets killed on the railway tracks is a fat boy from Eton. So like, bad boy, yeah, bad so boy, these, bad are, boy. these are all things which like, um, remember we said that in um, James Herbert books, people who get killed are always people who he feels have got something wrong with them. So there's a <laughs> there's a fat boy who doesn't like go, doing sports. <laughs> he gets killed. There is, he, yeah. Um, yeah. There's, 100, yeah, hundred percent. There's a couple in a in a in a mini where the guy, uh, the woman, the guy is like trying to um, touch her up, and the uh, and, and Jesus the, Christ, yeah. So they get um, that happens. How right? how how are they profiting off of the crash? They're not that the, that whole thing is something oh, which man. you I right. that's been put in. It's, these are just like people who are doing. So the person who's in the boat, he's not like a looter. He's some big, f- massively obese man. Another fat oh. person he doesn't oh. like, who um has had an affair. Uh, and um, hates his wife and stuff. And it's suddenly, quite Roald Dahlie, isn't it? In yeah, that way, yeah. that it's like. But the other one is like there's this woman who's like an antiques dealer. Yeah. Who um, Lovejoy? Yeah. Could yeah. be played by Love. It could be uh, Ian Machine. <laughs> Married this guy <laughs> who um, <laughs> basically made her, uh, made her, he made her. Sorry, he married this guy, and then. <laughs> Forced her to let him have anal sex with her, and then um, what? what? The fuck? <laughs> and then started um, bringing gay men home and having sex with them in the house. Um, <laughs> oh, Jesus, James Herbert. <laughs> so then she started slowly poisoning him until he, he turned into like a like a half dead, emaciated um, corpse. But then yeah. he then becomes possessed by the demon and then like grabs her and j- jumps out of the Jesus. window. And s- <laughs> is, this all, is this all in, the in Survivor? The, yeah, in the book, yeah. So all Lucky that is hell. going on. But then he, at the moment of death, he sees um, Keller as like the, uh, um, as, a, as a ghost. So when that happens, like this naked, like half starved, half poisoned man comes smashing through a window with the what died. Keller goes over. It's like tries to try and help, yeah. and then his mate comes over and goes, oh, "Come on, let's go and have a pint." And they just leave that. But it's just, it's just, it's nuts. Um, well, that's like the bit in the film where the guy sees the ghost girl and the and the doll, and then he goes outside the cemetery or whatever it is and just lights up a fag. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, if I if that happened to me, I would literally fill my pants. I wouldn't yeah. just be like, "Oh, yeah. actually, I might just to get over this, I might just have a ciggy." Yeah, but there's lo- that priest has got loads of stuff going on in the. Yeah. Um, in the, Joseph, in the, in Joseph, the well, that's very James Herbert, isn't it? Yeah. Joseph Cotton has fuck all to yeah, do with it. Yeah, so he, he didn't even need to be in it. Like that, that whole part could is, have been anyone. It could have been Denholm Elliot. Yeah, but I would say if you take out all of the problematic stuff, uh, anti-Semitism, um, homophobia, um, <laughs> and, people. and anti anti um, fatness in it, the book is actually mm. I quite like the idea. You of, enjoyed like, it. They someone accidentally like some black magic person accidentally got killed <laughs> then becoming like saying I'm going to keep all these spirits here that feels like something like like the pol- like poltergeist it feels like yes. the whole thing of mm. remember he, yeah in poltergeist 2 that, well, that priest was keeping all of the g- spirits with him and wouldn't let them go I quite like that idea that's not a British film Once. Cleve so you can't bring it up in the pantheon <laughs> oh, I'm of, sorry um, yes well when <laughs> it also reminded me of something that I mentioned way way back when we used to do something horrific the now Sadly, no longer with us, horror writer Joel Lane. Yes. Um, who I said, oh, God, that, I'm really enjoying his short stories. And that was one of his, is he does sort of like the sleight of hand in that you think you're with a particular character. And it turns out that this character is, in fact, the ghost who's getting his ongoing revenge on the person oh, who killed no him. way. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's really good. It's mm. terrific. I would do, I would read the, because it's only, once again, and, you know, maybe here's the thing here. A short story mm. so you get that done and i think he does it in like 20 30 pages i would gladly read the whole thing as a patreon exclusive yeah. I, l- I love <laughs> a uh, short story oh well, it's Jake. great oh absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Recording it send it to me and I'll, yeah. I'll pop it on the page yeah so yes what did we think and this is oh. where i'm prepared to be controversial Okay, I, I, I'm going to give it a, a one out of five, yes. purely for the uh, the cinematography of the cra- of the crash um, area because I thought that that to me looked great. I, I just loved how that looked. Yeah, but right. the story the story just made no sense at all. No, like, you can't have a twist like that in a film if if there's no there's no reason for it to happen in it. 
And you can't have like a a, a mystery about like a, who blew the the plane up if it's like someone who's got no reason to do it at all. It's, it's, and also with the whole kind of Chekhov's gun thing, the fact that the like oh, out of the characters we've been introduced to. Who may be responsible for this? Mm. Is it the only person? Oh, yeah, it is him. Yeah. The yes. only person who's not dead or, you know, kind yeah. of. I would say all- in the book that like, the person who does it is introduced way late in the book. And it's like, okay. who is this per- like, person? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's been so many like red herrings up until this point. Yeah. But, um, yeah. For me, and this is where I'm going to be controversial, even though I didn't watch all of it and I thought it was fairly shit. It mm. did actually give me the creeps, mm. and I found the atmosphere to it quite unsettling. That's just Australia mm. in general, isn't it? That's Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and there I d- goes I our one Australian listener. Here. The music I thought was quite good. Yeah, good on mm. Unusually, mm. I just thought there was something about it that was strangely. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. They're all like sleepwalkers sleeping through this weird yeah. dream like yeah. film. Half yeah. half assed film. Yes. It really feels it, it, like a tax write off. It's really half assed, but there's something about it which is I'm sure ninety nine people would watch this and say this is just mm. a pile of shit. But yeah. something in me found it really quite creepy and unsettling, cool. and I don't know why. Maybe it's because I had that coronation chicken sandwich <laughs> last week, <laughs> or because my um, my car window fell out. But there was something I was watching, and I thought, out of all the things we've watched, this is probably the one thing that I found weirdly the most unsettling, the strange. Uh, and then mm-hmm. the scene at the end where he's talking to Robert Powell, he's talking gobbledygook, and then Robert, Robert Powell is walking along just putting the lights on. One by one, yeah. yeah. It's really cool. I'm like, this makes no sense, but there's something about their performances which is quite dreamlike. Yeah. Mm. And, quite, and I'm sure, <laughs> um, a, bit, a bit like The Happening. Have either of you seen The Happening? No. No. With Marky Mark. Yeah. I'm familiar uh, with it. <laughs> it's M. Night Shyamalan. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's quite a cult film. And I think a lot of people thought it was shit, but that gave me the creeps a bit because it's yeah. like, it must be deliberate the, the way that it's done. And I'm not saying this film is deliberate. I no. don't think it's actually that, mm. that good, but there is something about it which gave me the creeps. And I would probably rate it higher than I thought I was going to. Just because of the music, the just the atmosphere is weirdly unsettling and and, and quite dreamlike yeah. because it's like there's, it there's, there's, there's no semblance to reality whatsoever, does it? Let's face there's it. There's something about seeing a film like The Happening or something like this where someone spent a shitload of money on something. Mm. You've got a really good cameraman filming it, and, it and make, a great cast as yeah, well, and it, and it not making any sense. But yeah. then your brain is like. I, I well, must Sam, be missing something. There, there must be it. some kind of like semiotics in here, which is I, is which I'm missing. But yeah, because we've watched, you know, we've watched extra, we've watched um, oh. uh, Life Force. Oh. You uh, like the, you get Life Force? You get that high mark. I mean, that was kind of rip roaring nonsense. This is is got a, an atmosphere quite unique to itself, which is, I think, almost totally by accident, but actually quite interesting and and i was quite surprised i i would you know i'd say it was absolute shit mm. but there is something in it which is just like oh this is quite unsettling and weird and mm. sometimes you, know, you can this- enjoy shit can't you yeah yeah oh god <laughs> theory christ not after that coronation chicken sandwich <laughs> crude so what are you gonna what gonna give it Joe? well I don't know. Relative to what have I? What have I given yeah. recent? Uh, <laughs> what have I given recent films, Cleves? You gave nothing but the night of four. Um, and what is nothing but the night? It's the one with um. That's another weird fucking film. With uh, <laughs> the Charlemagne films one. Oh, the conspiracy! Right, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I can never remember the title <laughs> of that one. Yeah, okay, I gave that a four. Yeah. Right, yeah. Mm. Um, you gave Bride of Dracula to Life Force Five. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I think I find that my scores change over time. Yeah. Yes. Because now I'd give like Life Force like a one. 
Yeah, I think it is. You, I, yeah. I think I'd give this a three. There we go. Well, for how yeah. I'm feeling now. But, yeah. dear listener, well, so in be. a couple of weeks' time, I might look back on this film and think, God, I, what? what a load of... Yeah. Do you know what? Do you know one of the worst ones we've watched? Uh, the one with Roddy McDowell in that room oh, with the girl and the, yeah. oh, the fake what legs. The f- that was fucking awful, wasn't it? The legend yeah. of Hell House. That yeah. was absolutely <laughs> the pits. Yeah, well, how, can you guess how much you gave that then, John? I, I don't know. Minus 20. Two and a half you gave that. that see, that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think you could only give scores after a certain amount of time, can't no, I you? Think, I just... think you should go directly from what you think of the, at the time. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, mm. James, what are you going to give it? James, what? One. One. <laughs> One. You said you hated I, Australia uh, off the end of this. I, it made me cross at Australia. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah, <laughs> I think I agree I said, with oh, you there, James. That's enough. Um, Come on. Cleaver, what know, have you given better. it? A one. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You read out a YouTube comment from the one uh, from the thing we watched the other day, and I thought there's oh, some look- good ones here. Yeah, there's some is, good ones here. This is my favourite one. What yeah. a lovely film. <laughs> Tra- <laughs> tragic. <laughs> Capital Robert a- Powell or Jasper Carrot. It says, it says, what a lovely film. Tragic. Capital is very sad. But- <laughs> Sue Boutney in uh, Scarborough. <laughs> Still going. But also stands Take for, that out. But also stands for supernatural justice over corporate greed and injustice. Mm. Capital well, I- Yeah, I quite like that. That, that just, reading a bit is quite good. I'm now going to give it a five. Just wish such stories were true under current world affairs. But yeah. sadly, they're not. Five heart emojis, six thumbs up emojis, five cross emojis, um, four salute emojis, and then lots of like angry face emojis. I was about to say, it's the Daily Mail comments yeah. section, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh my and God. And then someone else has said, Agatha was in lots of films in the 70s and 80s, and then someone gave thumbed up that comment. Yeah. Who was Agatha? Agatha. Jenny Agatha was in lots of films in oh, the series. Ag- mm. Are you saying Agatha? No, I said, yes. I, I said Agatha. Well. Oh, I, mean, <laughs> anyway. um, I, I only gave it a thumbs up for the part where the plane crashes. It's the best bit of the weird. film. <laughs> That's right. Christ. Um, I read a comment where someone said that they went to America and they had a similar experience of this on their plane. Yeah. What? Which, well. um, which? Recently, <laughs> we've had that that uh, that flight oh. coming into Britain had extreme air turbulence, didn't it? And people it all went crazy. Died, that guy yeah. died of a yeah. heart attack. Yeah. And he was heavily involved in Amdram. Yeah, what a way to go! Was he really? Yes. I, I, was he I sitting next whole... to like the modern Alistair Crowley? Yes, I think that was. I want to say <laughs> that I found that story heartbreaking, and I know my friends here are laughing, but I found that story very upsetting. Mm. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Okay, something horrific. So, um, yeah. Apart from that, st- that news story, which is obviously very horrific, oh, the worst. Horrific. So, we took time this week, Helen and I, to watch um, Late Night with the Devil. Yes, yes, which we've all seen now. Which was terrific entertainment. I I thought that it didn't need the kind of tacked on um, day to day style resume of what was happening in America at the time, the time to understand. Mm. The mm. film, I don't th- don't think it needed that, but I thought the film itself was really good, very entertaining, slightly dodgy effects, but I thought overall yeah. it was yeah. really good fun for the for the for the budget, and, and yes. that's what that kind of budget horror movies effects look like. Unfortunately, yes, I, I, I just thought- think if you can't do effects, don't do yeah, effects. Yeah. The bit, also, I'm talking about the bit where he vomits. Yeah. Yes. The guy at the start, when he does the black vomit onto the camera, mm. it just looks shit. It looked and like the lightning dwarf. bolts and stuff. That's what. Oh, yeah. that, that didn't look bad to me. It mm. was just his vomit. I thought, oh. But I'd, like, I would love what, someone I, like um, Andy Nyman to like make a, a, a an immersive cinema version of it. Uh, well, you could do Ghost Watch. Version, yeah. You could do a Ghost Watch yes. version, couldn't you? Yeah. It was very inspired by Ghost Watch. And yes. what, my whole thing was, it was nice to see that, bearing in mind they were working on the amount of people that had produced it at the start. Oh, James, that was insane. That was nuts, wasn't it? It's was about 10 different people We were produced. like, oh, there's been a few now. Stuff. And then it carried yeah. on for like another 20 minutes. It keeps going and yeah. keeps going. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. Obviously, that shows that, you know, they had to rustle up money, money, money from money, money yeah. from all over the show. Mm. And it's nice to see that a, a horror film that doesn't just stick to the standard trope yes. of, you know, 
what gets made of, oh, this serial killer or this yeah, undead yeah, yeah, killer yeah, who yeah, keeps yeah, coming yeah. back over. It was nice to see that they tried something different, mm. which I think, you know, yes. it should be applauded for. Yeah. I think yeah. they they sat down, looked at how much money they got, and thought, "What can we do that's different?" Yeah, working backwards from this endpoint, and to think they did it all within one set. Yeah, mm. it's quite a small cast. Yeah, I, I just think it's a really clever idea. If, yeah. it, 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 it's re, it, it's and it's funny. It's quite yes. good. It's good fun, and mm. it's like, oh, this yes. this is quite different to your average kind of, uh. The possession of Millie Evans, exactly. You know those yeah. kind of films where it's like the house on the moor with the haunted family, mm. and it's all those kind of things. Uh, what are they called? Not incestuous, mm. Mm. insidious. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's all those kind of films, aren't exactly. they? That are just go on forever, yeah. and you're like, yeah. "Fuck, this is just bollocks." Yeah. But it also yeah. remind, it, remind me of another film called The Cleansing it. Hour, which is another Shudder original. Came out in 20, 2019, where. Mm. Um, the, a guy becomes popular of, of being like a, a YouTuber um, exorcist. Like you, Cleves. Mm. Yeah. And then he, um, <laughs> <laughs> he does basically they do this um, exorcism and he, they're getting low. And it's, it's a real one because he's been faking up until now and, he's, and he ends up doing a real one and they get loads and loads of people watching it. <laughs> um, but then they yeah. realize it's the fact that it's getting the power from the people watching so they've got to try and get people to stop watching it to, to get off of it well, that's a good one that's worth watching cool um my this something is horrific it is is something that i've met, meant to talk about for the last two that we've done and i keep every time I, we finish recording I go, oh geez i forgot about it yes now Go on james what it is is i seldom remember remember my dreams and i normally hate it when people go on about wow, my dreams this I is a good start I, I, james it, <laughs> Thank you. I had a. I woke up suddenly from a dream. And thought, oh my god! I had a really vivid dream that Ross was making a film and that he wrote me and John into it. Well, that sounds realistic. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. All that's I can no tell you about, about the, this enterprise is that, like, Ross was really like super enthusiastic about it, going like, "It will work. This will really work in camera." <laughs> and I, I was like, "It won't. It won't." And the, it featured one scene, Ross, where you had to climb up a ladder and then be at the top of the ladder and go, Whoa! and then like and fall a- over backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember going, Ross, don't do this. That's don't, so dream, don't. James. Yeah, and and then Ross went, oh, it's fine because I'm only going to go about five rungs up, and then like in post production, we'll make it look like I've gone really high up the ladder. That's actually what they did in the film <laughs> Fall. Yes, yeah. right. And I just like, oh, 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 God. And it just being very, very stressed That's in the dream. Brilliant. But then in the crazy dream logic, the guest, it fe- the film featured a guest appearance from two no members way. of the 90s Britpop band Supergrass. <laughs> 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 Gaz Coombs and Danny Coffey. Yeah, and amazing. And I was like, it's the guy from Supergrass. And, and you were like, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We're going to film in a minute. Like, and, I, and I remember saying to Gaz Coombs in the dream, why are you doing this? <laughs> why and wouldn't yeah. he? Why would <laughs> and, yeah. and he said to me, "Oh well, we we had a day off from the tour, and Ross yeah. asked us to do it. So I thought, why not?" And then in my dream, I was like, "Fine, we got Supergrass in this film. <laughs> That's amazing." So I, my subconscious had this w- that we made a bizarre General Witchfinders movie film, oh. or so overseeing overseeing it like some sort of crazed Orson Welles esque tyrant. Lovely. Good. Oh, oh, we haven't done what's happened next. So no, next, oh, yeah. next time on General Witchfinders. A, a good one I want to watch, well, hopefully. I was going to say, I'm going to, because I've made you watch something quite bad, I'm going to give mm. you the choice, okay, between yes. two things. Yeah, go on. Uh, the House of Drip Blood or The Gorgon. <sighs> oh, what do you think, James? I don't want, I, I know nothing of either of them. So I'm trusting you. House of Drip Blood is an amicus one, which we haven't done yet. Yes. That's a portmanteau, isn't it? Yep. So remind me of the episodes in that one, please. Oh, um, I know I, there's John Pertwee and in Ingrid Pitt. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Let me have a look. Is Joss Ackland in it? A Scotland Yard investigator looks at the four mysterious cases involving an unoccupied house and its tragic previous tenants. One, a hack novelist mm-hmm. encounters a strangler who's the villain of his books, leading to his wife questioning his sanity. Two men are mm-hmm. obsessed with a wax figure of a woman from their past. <laughs> a little girl 
with a stern widowed father displays an interest in witchcraft and an arrogant horror film actor mm. purchases a black cloak which gives him vampire powers. That's John Pertwee and Ingrid Pitt. Yeah. The Gorgon is Oh, the Gorgon is very good. And it's got Patrick Troughton in, in a wig. Mm-hmm. Another wig. Yeah. What do we think, James? Oh, I'm I'm done, happy with either. We haven't honestly. done a Pigmanto since um the black and white one with the um yes the dummy oh dead of night dead yeah. of night so let's do this okay. let's do this yeah right? let's do the portmanteau then yeah okay okay so next time we are going I think to... someone's got a white jag in it we're going to visit the house oh. that dripped with blood cool oh, the house yeah. that dripped blood I was going to say the house that dripped blood yes and I think that was the first DVD that I was ever bought cool what's yes. the Kenny Everett film <laughs> what's oh. that called something like that the yeah. house that oh. I I that. Don't, it's not I that I, one. Don't watch it, that. No. Okay. Oh, it's got Den- <laughs> Denim Ode in it. I've just seen him smoking yeah. a cigarette. It's a good... I, it's Joss Ackland in it. John Bryans, John Bennett, Denim Elliott, Peter Cushion, Joanne Dunnan, Tom mm. Adams, Robert Lang, Joss Ackland, Wolf Morris, Christopher Lee. Yes. Uh, yeah, lots of cool. It's, it's a good... I think... The Christopher Lee one is about a little girl that's like a pyromaniac or something. Okay. <laughs> you never know <laughs> these stories. They're on for 10 minutes. And you're like, God, what the fuck was that about? Yeah. Okay. The, well, um, but Ingrid Pitts looks great in it, let's okay. say. Well, join us for that one. Yes, please do. Until next time. Happy day, everyone. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Thanks for getting through that with you. Love, light, and peace. And go and watch it. It's on YouTube. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like Johnny Rotten and Cleves. <laughs> Nothing, a rude word. Next question. Uh, rude. question. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty fucking rotter. Yeah. You dirty fucking rotter. <laughs> <laughs> right, goodbye. You have been listening to The General Witch Finders. <laughs> Support the show and continue the conversation at patreon.com forward slash general witch finders subscribe and spread the word at general witch finders.com farewell you don't have nightmares Hi, it's Ross from the General Witchfinders. Did you know that I also do another podcast with my friend David? Hello. Well, I had phones before that. You're not taking this seriously, Ross. David and I do our own supernatural research and investigations in our home county of Dorset. So, if you think that's up your street, why don't you give it a listen? It's Dark Darset, D-A-R-Z-E-T. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts. It's not that. Away from the uh, from the depressing world of of cars Motoring. and how much they cost, you guys might be. I don't know if you guys saw, but I thought you might both might be quite interested in it. I went to Greenham Common. Ooh. I was on Greenham Common oh. military base. Yeah. Yes, they still got women Sorry. there. Is that where you went, no. John? Oh, no, hey, James, I'm gonna go no, find yeah. some women. I, I've no, heard no, there's no, women no, at Greenham. No, Common. I went. I went. Uh, no, I uh, know because they filmed Star Wars there, Ross. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's, that's why I went. That's oh. right. I but, think I went but, there once with my old dead boss, Dave. What, after he died? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's it's genuinely fascinating because what they've done is they've rewilded the whole place. Mm. Yes. So it's all just, it, it's gone back to nature apart from two areas. Mm. One is the original control tower, which mm. they've left. Nice. And hang on, I'll, I'll send you like, this, my favourite, you know, like, as you go through, They've got signs up everywhere telling you, like, but well, what was done here and what was done there? You guys have got to see this. It was my favourite sign. For no Edmonds. It, it, you know, it, 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 close. It, it made me laugh so much. I, I said to Kirsty, I've got to just take a picture, picture of this. Look at this. <laughs> so, <laughs> what you make of that? There you go. <laughs>
<laughs> How strange. Isn't, isn't that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> Cupboard. This, probably. <laughs> and it's like, while well, we were there, one of the, the old guys who sort of can, will give you a bit of a guided tour, we overheard him say, oh, we had somebody here about half an hour ago who was stationed here. I was like, no way. ask him. Yeah. Ask what was in the cupboard? What was in the cupboard. It's yeah. not as if it's like 500 years ago and they're speculating wildly. It's like, people are still alive. Here. Well, if it's 500 anyway. years ago, they say they would say it was for ritual purposes. Oh, yeah. like yes. Anyway, so, so, so that's still there, but the whole runway has been, like, been rewilded. So as you walk along, it's incredible. Every now and then you'll just get like, obviously, some, like some piping or things which they couldn't pull out of the ground or they've just left. So it, it, it's really interesting. And then yes. it, it, like they say, here is the end of what was the original runway from World War II. Everything on from here was where they extended the runway to basically get the nuclear bombers on. Mm -hmm. Which was like, oh, interesting. We walked all the way around there, and they then then said, on the left-hand side, here is where they stored all the nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. And it was designed to withstand a nuclear, nuclear airburst. Weapons. weapons, indeed. So, it, it, and you just think, oh, blimey, bearing in mind, like, our childhoods, and, like, the role that Greenham played, mm -hmm. and, like, going on about nuclear weapons, just to see it all, like, rewilded now, and yeah. that nature had taken back over. It was fucking brilliant. And it was a really lovely walk, too, because it's all flat. Because <laughs> um, it's all just, like, totally... When I, when I went with Dave, when he was still alive, this was, I, I think we were doing a job for a company called Griffin Windows, who were based in some... Mm. Is it near Yeovil, James? Somewhere like that? It's Newbury. Right? It's literally yes. two minutes away from Newbury. Yes, that's right. So yeah. the man took us to see the gates, and he said mm. that the rumour at the time was that all of this was a big... Um, smoke and mirrors and the nuclear weapons yeah. were actually stored somewhere else and then all Ooh, the stuff with the women and stuff was just done they allowed yeah. them all to congregate there just to to um, yeah. to take the um heat off the actual other real location which mm. to me sounded like conspiracy theory but quite a good <laughs> conspiracy theory yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. But yes, bear in mind, it didn't cost us a single penny. Oh, and that's it, nice. Oh, wow. it? It, was, Unlike, it was a nice, like, yeah. it was a nice walk. Unlike Trident. History, everything. <laughs> oh, hey, nice. Sound. Sound. So, what is behind you, Cleves? All your Doctor Who collection and stuff. Yeah, just a load, load of old shit in it. Oh, hang on. There's a. <laughs> Why don't you eBay it all? Just start again. Because I love it all. I love it. Do you, um, yeah, I bet you don't look at any of it, do you? I do. I masturbate uh, over it regularly. <laughs> okay. Is that better? Is that better? James, say something. You were a little echoey. Hello. Good evening, John. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah I think James is better now. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Do you want to? Should we do it? Do yeah. It? My, yes. My notes right. are. In, even more than usual, are slightly incoherent because obviously I watched 20 minutes of a film that had all of the title sequence and all of the credits cut out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, this music sounds a bit jarring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, I've only got two pages of notes and I think we can get through the plot in about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so considering I there's no dialogue to... <laughs> until the, like the 29th minute or something. But what would yes. be really interesting... What I'm going yeah. to do is, um, because I've effectively read the book, I've, I've listened to the, um, the, uh, the seven hours of um, oh, audio Jesus. book or whatever. So I read it, like, uh, Him. Um, Powell. What? What's his name? Not, um, oh, Robert, Robert Powell. Powell. Robert Powell, yeah. Oh, no, I thought you meant James Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> his, his would be an awful voice to listen to for yeah. seven hours. So um, but I'm, my, but I'm gonna... my hands tugged at the flimsy material. The flimsy penis. Panties. <laughs> <laughs> I rode in to the set on a Harley Davidson. It wreathed in dry ice. <laughs> Iconic. Um, right. Yeah, I. So I'm going to tell at the end. Yeah, I'm going to see what you guys think happened in the film, and then I'll tell okay. you what mm. happened in the book. Um, and then we, I know what Wikipedia said happened. Uh, okay, but I, yeah. Well, I, I tried to re read the Wikipedia thing, and it just said plot. Somebody needs to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jesus. What is this? That's good? how few. That's how little anyone cares. Right. And yeah. then I suddenly, uh, the other day, because I, I, weirdly enough, was listening to the show because I'd never listened to the clip show that Ross put together. Mm -hmm. 
So I was driving up to Kirsty and I thought, I best put on, you know, just something to listen to. Yeah. Myself. The person yeah. I find most most interesting in the world. <laughs> myself. Ah, yeah. Right. And then then afterwards it said, Oh, you may also be interested in this podcast. I was like, not Hammer. from that dickhead. Ooh, I will not. <laughs> be interesting um, if um, it goes the way around though. People listen to him and get recommended good. us. Bring him on. I um join us. I attempted to listen to an episode of his podcast as a homework before we started Ooh. this podcast. Mm. And I found it intensely boring. And I thought, this is not Good. what I want our podcast to be like. Because it's Good. a very kind of scholarly tread oh. through. Oh. oh, so we enter the third act of the script. And the oh, it's God. just very, right. it's, it's, it's like, it's about um, story writing structure. And yeah. I'm sure oh, some okay. people find it yeah. interesting. But I listened to one about um, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, and it was very dry and, and okay. just very strange. Do they play um, Grace Jane's clips during it? Can be good stuff. Three years. 1999 has <laughs> caught up with Ross me in a big that. way recently. What, what's happening? I <laughs> missed a bit. I just went, we're 50 in three years. And I went, shh, oh, shh, fuck shh. off. <laughs> we're 50, <laughs> 50 I, in four years. No, we're, right. we're old. We're I, I went rate. to the GPs for a checkup because yeah. dad's surviving uh, bowel and colon cancer. And they say, if you have a direct family member who's had that, you should get checked up. And when I went yes. to the doctors, the GPs, he looks at me and he said, oh, how old are you? And I said, oh, 47. <laughs> And he said, oh, it's close enough to 50. We can do it now. And I was like, oh, no, don't say it. Fucking hell. Christ. No. No doctor who was at least 20 years younger than me. Yeah. Do yeah. not fucking tell me I'm that yeah. close to 50. Well, yeah. I got Cut that scales out. that tell me when you stand yeah. on them, it tells you what, what, what my... Um, when you're going to die. No, what my body age is, you know. <laughs> oh, God, please. You've got the body of like a... And what did he say? Years old, so like oh, I just, I, okay. I just work in with young people now. I just, and you will, I'm sure, get this, mm. James, as well. And yeah. you might know this, Kiva. I mean, yeah. kids like it just bends your um, understanding of time mm. that you still yeah. feel about 18, mm. but that's like yes. 30, 30 years ago yes, right. now. Yeah. And you're like, the, 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 the biggest the time, one, John, where's the time the thing gone? I said before is that you, I'm regularly teaching at A level students mm. that for them, 9 um, 11. Is a just a, a historical event yeah, that yeah, happened yeah, in the past? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. And when I tell kids it, about it in class, when, like yeah. when I do it with the year nines, they look yeah. at you like, "What was it like that day?" I'm like, "Well, surely you yeah. remember." Oh no, of course you don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. It's, it's wild, 20, isn't it? Twenty three years ago, it's I, I get that about all, all kinds of news events yeah. now. Where it, yeah. I mean, kids don't kids don't take any notice of the news now, though, no. do, do they really? But no, but there's, there's stuff which we saw happen, which people are now. Denying ever happened because well, yeah, exactly. you know, oh, it's, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's insane. But like yeah. the other thing is, I, I'm I'm finding like when we were kids, the Second World War mm. felt like it was hundreds of years ago. Yes, um, correct. But now it's coming up to the 85th, and it feels like well, it doesn't feel like yeah. you know, it feels like so last week. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, my grandparents were in the Second World War. Yeah, so yeah, it's not yeah, that yeah, long yeah, ago. Yeah, but yeah. it's just weird how time. Yeah. Your perception of yep. time just changes. So yes, and you just feel yeah. like like the uh, the window of of peace in Europe mm. feels like oh, we did very in this narrow. very very it's small come into the close yeah. now exactly yeah. 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 I remember- they keep talking about what oh, we no longer got the the peace dividend. You know, yes. that's why we've got no money. You're like oh yeah. Fuck. I I really remember clearly the fiftieth anniversary of um the start of the war, mm-hmm. and now. I'm coming to the 50th anniversary of my own birth, yeah. which yeah. is just, and I'm just like, what the fuck? That's the difference between 1939, 1978. Yeah. It's insane. Mm. Like wh- wh- where did all that time go? Yeah. Like 50th yes. anniversaries of things is like things really a long time ago now. Whereas mm-hmm. now 50th anniversary now is like Slade. Yeah. Or like, yeah. Um, you know, like uh, Led Zeppelin. 74. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Well, like the, kids, the, the kids five like, years into their career, yeah. so fifty years ago, the kids would say something like, "Oh, imagine what the iPad's going to be like when when I'm your age." I said, "It won't, it won't, it won't be that." I said, "You have no idea what the world is going to uh, be yeah. so <laughs> different by that point." Yeah, I said, "We didn't. I didn't even have. I never saw a computer until I was like eight. Yeah. We had to take it in turns to go on one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> so, yeah. Like, yeah uh, don't. You it's know. a big jump, isn't it? I, it? I think it's a bit like the jump in the kind of." 1910s 20s where 
you know, people suddenly were in motor cars. When when you think of mm. my grandmother who was born in 1910, lived mm. through an, an wow. era of, um, you know, horses and carts mm. going to, like, the atomic age. Mm. She mm. lived from a horse and cart to um, man landed on the moon. Mm. Imagine mm-hmm. that changing, you know, and if that's going to happen to your daughter's cleaves, like mm-hmm. the iPad 2, yeah. what? Well, yeah. And, uh, you, I, mm-hmm. I, you, ca- you cannot envision what it's going to be, no. unless it all goes to shit and, they, and it's like visionaries or something, and then we all go back to... <laughs> <laughs> like, well, and again, this, <laughs> this, this, this isn't for the podcast, Ross. This is just... A, I'm sorry if I've never mentioned it before, but I, this has always really stuck with me. And Mark Gates mm. shared it at the time, mm. and he said that he knew someone, because the whole thing is, is that like porters at the various Cambridge colleges do the job for life. They, they, you know, they don't retire, like death yeah. takes them out. And so somebody who he knew, who was old, yeah. so in their 80s, he said the guy that was his porter when he was at Cambridge, yeah. the guy that he took over from had been in the Battle of Waterloo mm. as a kid. No way! Which is fucking nuts if you think wow. about it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, they yeah. said it's literally three whole... Like, because like these guys all live to be like their eighties and nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like somebody yeah. really old speaking to someone who was really old and taking yeah. over from somebody who lived a long time. And he was a kid in the. And apparently, like he said, "Oh, what do you remember?" Because you know he was obviously like with the army as a boy. And yeah. he said, "Oh, what do you remember about Waterloo?" And apparently, he would only say the drums, dear boy. Mm. Oh my god! Mm. And it was like, and it is, and I think like Gacy's put it, it's like all of a sudden the past is alive. Yeah. 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 yeah, Oh, that's, and it, because it seems so far away. Yeah. Like, Matt, like, you see, so in the book. So, yeah. Did you see that they were celebrating, I think, their 25th anniversary of the, yeah. Yeah. Was it the first transmission and they'd started writing five years before that? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, amazing. I said, I I saw, I saw the first radio. Oh, yes. Them them doing the first episode. yeah, Yeah, Yeah. 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 Yeah, which is mad. That's mad. And I read Mark Gates' right. first book, which is Nightshade, which is a Doctor Who mm-hmm. new adventure. Mm. And that feels like five minutes ago, but that was 1992 yeah. or yeah. something. <laughs> Me and Beck got tickets to go and see Inside Number Nine mm. in the West End. Mm. I think next April. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be. Have you watched the new series? I've watched uh, up until the, the 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 doorbell one. I haven't seen. Oh, the do- I love the doorbell. I think they've been really good this time because I thought. The last lot were kind of not not shit, but like because it's still like a really good thing to watch on TV. Mm. But th- I think this run has been really strong, and the the most recent one is very it's very within their universe, and it and it works really well. Uh-huh. And it's just like um, it's the uh, escape rooms one. Yeah, but, I haven't um, seen it yet. No. Yeah, it works really well because you're just like, where are they going to take this? Mm. And then um, it goes somewhere completely different but also very much within mm-hmm. where they've been before which mm-hmm. i think is quite mm-hmm. nice yeah I, I i i hope the last one might loop it back around yes me. so do i yeah i might watch the first episode to see is that the one is that sardines yeah they're all in the in the cupboard yeah, yeah. that would be funny wouldn't it yeah because it's like that only feels like five minutes ago and that's 10 years mm. ago isn't yeah. it yeah focus god there we are I'm going to go and kill myself now. <laughs> yep, me too. We don't need to. We're all just dying slowly anyway. Yeah, yeah there we are. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No, no more. Oh, oh, oh.